If you were to take my entire fountain pen collection and lay it out on a table and ask 100 people to describe it, I suspect that the adjectives utilitarian, industrial, or understated would be conspicuously absent. Those are visual styles to which I am not generally drawn. I find that I prefer designs that dazzle with spectacle over those that shine solely from their refinement and attention to detail. While there is a certain amount of engineering that goes into building a fine writing instrument out of what is, as renowned Nimmeister Richard Binder once put it, a controlled leak, I find that I am most interested in those pens which also exhibit artistry. Yet, every once in a while, I get a chance to use a pen that eschews the flashes and bangs of design spectacle for simple, quiet precision. These pens are so exquisitely and intricately engineered that the engineering itself becomes a work of art and captures my attention in the process. The pen in today's review is one of those pens. Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Pen Habit. I wanted to kick off today's review by saying a quick thank you to Philip Barlow, who loaned me his Conid bulk filler, which is the pen for today's review. Uh, he had only had it for a, a few days before he packed it up and shipped it off to me for review purposes, and I like to keep a pen for a while and get to know it before I, I do the review, so I have had his new pen for probably a little bit longer than I should. So I wanted to get this recorded, get it in the mail, get it back to him. So thank you, Philip. I appreciate it. Now, as mentioned, this is the Conid Bulk Filler, pen for today's review. Now, Conid is a company based in Antwerp, Belgium, um, run by a couple of engineers. Uh, it's been around for a, f a few years now, um, and their pens are pretty much unlike anything else on the market. Uh, a quick look at them, you'd say, oh, it's just another demonstrator. Well, it's a lot more than just another demonstrator, and there's a lot going on in this pen. So let me walk you through it from kind of top to bottom. Uh, this is perhaps one of the most precision engineered pens I've ever seen. Uh, and as I mentioned in the intro, there comes a point when something is so well engineered, the engineering itself kind of becomes artistic. And that's how I feel about this pen. It's, it is so well engineered. There's nothing superfluous on this pen. It is as streamlined as possible while being perfectly engineered for almost everything that it does, which that's a real spectacular feat, I think. So um, you've got this little uh, bicolor medallion here on the top, titanium ring, and then a black metal, I think it's metal ring here, another titanium ring onto which is attached this titanium clip, nice little bit of spring here. The clip can be engraved as per your request, and uh, Philip decided to have a date engraved on his, which is, I believe he told me the day he met his now wife, which is kind of a cool little thing. Crystal clear acrylic in the cap, and you can see a couple of little ridges here, which serve as, and I'll show you that when I uncap the pen, um, kind of serve as the inner cap and, and some stoppers on the inside to help keep the nib from drying out. Another titanium ring here that says uh, Conid Bulk Filler Fountain Bell. Um, I'm going to assume that Fountain Bell means fountain pen. It is also the forum name on the FPN forum of one of the founders of Conid. Another crystal clear barrel here for holding the ink. It's a pretty big barrel and can hold about 2.5 milliliters of ink when it's completely full. There's a little plunger here for filling the system, and more on this in a second, because this is pretty cool. Um, then you've got the threads to connect the filling system, another couple titanium rings. This is actually a knob back here, and I can sh uh, actually show you what I mean here. So uh, it's just a knob there, um, real nice... Uh, smooth knob, and then it's got a couple of rubber O-rings in here that help hold the cap in place if you decide to post the pen. Um, so on the surface, very simple, very clean, very well manufactured, um, but it is so, it is so simple, it's not by accident. 
Um, they managed to do a lot with this simplicity, which is pretty impressive. So I'm going to uncap the pen now, and I'll, you can kind of see here the ridges that I was talking about earlier. It kind of serves as an inner cap to keep the, the nib from drying out. Under the, sec, under the cap, you've got these uh, titanium threads, and then I believe this is metal, um, a black metal section, nice concave shape. Uh, you'll notice here there's a little ink window which is actually a double reservoir. So um, when the plunger is all the way down, like in a, a standard vac filler, um, this little reservoir here fills up with ink. And you'll notice if I open up that reservoir, it kind of fills up, uh, it'll fill up with ink and then you can stop it down. This is both good and bad. It's a feature I don't particularly care for, but if you're flying a lot, uh, this is a, fe a life-saving feature. It also will help a little bit um, as you start to run out of ink, as the the air is, you know, the warms up with your hand, the air inside will expand and can cause the pen to burp a little bit. But with this double reservoir, that won't happen because you can just, you can tell it's just a tiny little reservoir here. And you can get about a page, a page and a half of writing before that reservoir runs out of ink, depending on the nib you're using. Uh, this is one of the few demonstrators that is completely see-through. I mean, it is almost, the only thing that's not see-through is the section, really. Everything else is completely see-through, including the cap. I didn't think that was such a hard thing to pull off, but a lot of people seem to have a problem with it. Putting inner caps of opaque material in, or, you know, putting facets on the, the barrel, or whatever it is, very few people manage to get it as see-through as this particular demonstrator is. Everything is crystal clear, beautifully polished, perfectly machined. It is a really high quality instrument. Um, you can get your choice of nibs with the pen. You can get either steel, titanium, or gold. This is a steel nib. I also have a titanium nib uh, that I'll, I'll review a little bit for you. This was a medium nib that was custom ground into an italic nib. Um, so a lot of the conid process, and we'll talk about this in value, can, you can customize it to what you want. And so th this particular nib was customized, and I'll, I'll show you how it writes in just a second. Nice kind of uh, concentric oval design, conid design there, and really an attractive pen all the way around. It does post. It posts moderately deeply. I find it a little back heavy when posted, so I don't post this pen. Um, it's long enough that I don't feel the need to. Now, one thing I did want to talk about before I do the full writing review is this filling system. The, this is called the Conid Bulk Filler around the Bulk Filler system, which is kind of a Conid exclusive. I believe they've patented it, but I don't know for sure. And when it comes to engineering a solution, this is just about the most perfect solution to the problem of how do I get as much ink as possible into the barrel of the pen. It is so perfectly simple, it, has, it surprises me that no one figured this out sooner uh, and that more people don't use this because, you know, with a regular piston filler, and I'll, I'll pull up one here. I don't have a, a demonstrator to show you, but I'll kind of show you what I mean on this one. Here's, so here's my Pelican M800. With a regular piston filler, you've got the piston knob, and then you've got a piston, and right about here is where the plunger is that, that goes up and down inside the barrel and sucks the ink up. That means that the maximum amount of ink you can get in the barrel is that much, because you've got to have room for the mechanism. Now, some manufacturers, uh, you know, back in the day, used to make kind of a telescoping mechanism where it would collapse in on itself as you twisted the knob. That's kind of a cool idea. It's a real pain in the butt to deal with in case it breaks and you need to replace it. So a lot of manufacturers just got rid of that entirely. Um, the folks at Conid came up with an idea that is just, I think, absolutely ingenious. So you'll notice that the whole barrel is open. There's no plunger anywhere in here. The plunger lives at the back of the pen. So in order to fill this pen, you unscrew the knob, you pull the knob, and you can probably notice here, I'll see if I can position this right in the light here, but there are threads on the very back of this plunger here. Uh, so in order to, or on the piston, excuse me, 
in order to pick up the plunger, you just bring it back, twist the knob a little bit, it, uh, it picks up the plunger, and all of a sudden, you can plunge it up and down. Then when you're done, you just retract the plunger all the way to the back, unscrew the piston, the plunger stays in place at the back, and you've got a full barrel of ink. It's a really simple system. It works so well. It makes it so much easier to clean this pen. Now the pen is disassemblable and you can, you can order special, or not special order, but one of the customizations you can get are the tools to take it fully apart. But this is so much easier to clean than a regular vac filling system because you don't have any weird mechanisms or anything like that. It just works. It's brilliant. So that is, in my opinion, the, the single best part of this pen is the filling system. Um, and if you're the kind of person who needs a large ink capacity, you know, someone who takes notes, a lot of notes, someone who does a writing, if I were writing novels or books, this would be the pen I'd, I'd pick. Uh, because you can fill it with more ink than almost anything else besides an eyedropper. And I don't really eyedropper pens because I've just had way too many problems with doing it. So um, I really, really like the solution that they came up with. Uh, Werner and Francis of Conid came up with. It's, it's a brilliant solution. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with this medium metallic nib. Uh, I don't know how well you can tell, but this is a nice, wet nib. I mean, this ink, this nib puts out a bunch of ink, which is one of the things that, um, 
that Philip requested when he requested the nibs. He wanted a juicy ink flow, and this delivers. So it is kind of a sharp italic, um, so it gives me a little more feedback than I would personally choose. Uh, I, if this were my nib, I'd probably smooth the corners out and make it just a touch more stub-like than italic-like. But it's beautifully ground, um, perfectly adjusted, you know, with the way I tend to hold my pens, stubs and italics just don't work well for me. And so I normally have a little bit of a problem with those kinds of nibs. Didn't have any problem with this medium italic at all. You know, it's probably a four and a half, five on the feedback scale, but beautifully adjusted. And when I remember to make sure that there's ink in this, this lower chamber, uh, it, it's just really, really a nice wet writer. Now, sometimes if I forget to open up the knob and let the ink flow a little bit, it'll dry out a touch and it gets a little bit scratchier, but that's my fault, not the pen's fault. So that's just one of the things you need to be aware of is that kind of double reservoir there. It's just like with, uh, you know, a, a Homo, Visconti Homo sapiens or a Twisby VAC 700 or a Pilot 823. It's, that's just kind of this design. I'm going to show you the extra fine nib that came with this pen as well, uh, but before I switch the nibs out, I wanted to show you something that's kind of interesting. So this is the nib unit, um, the extra fine nib unit, but you'll notice there is a little metal feeder tube on the back. This is not common on modern pens. You see it a lot on vintage pens, but it's not common on modern pens. And I think one of the things that helps make this pen such an interesting, uh, such an interesting option and, and helps make it work as well as it does. So I've swapped the nib units out, and this is the extra fine nib unit. Now, this nib unit is in titanium versus steel. You can get an extra fine from them you know, in, in the regular steel nibs. But titanium nibs, uh, as far as I know, Bach is the only one who is making titanium nibs. And their nibs generally tend to be a little bit wider than, you know, I think they come in fine and medium or something like that. They may even only come in one size. I don't remember right off the top of my head. But this particular nib, um, you know, uh, Philip wanted it ground to a very, very fine extra fine. And this is a very fine extra fine. Now, I don't generally care for extra fine nibs. I find them a little too scratchy for my tastes, and this is a very fine nib. Uh, but I will say that this, for an extra fine, this is a really, really nice nib. Titanium nibs are soft, and you can get a decent bit of line variation. Now, I'm not gonna push this very hard because you can spring titanium, and it's not my pen. Um, but the grind on this is really nice. It is nicely adjusted. It's a good wet ink flow for an extra fine, which is pretty uncommon. Usually extra fines tend to be really um, uh, a little on the dry side. Now, I will say that this nib, this extra fine has an almost architect-like grind to it. It's almost a little like a reverse stub where um, you'll get slightly and this is only very slightly wider lines on the horizontal than on the vertical. But it is a nice, nice rider. Um, it's a nice reverse rider, which with an even finer line, like an ultra extra fine line. Uh, so in general, both of the custom ground nibs on this pen are just spectacular. Uh, I look forward to trying just you know, like a regular fine titanium nib from them or a regular medium titanium nib uh, on, on a future pen because, you know, I like round nibs, but I like my nibs a little bit uh, with the gauge a little bit wider. Now, pricing this these pens can be a little tricky. Uh, the base price for the Conid Bulk Filler Regular, which is what this is, is 388 euros, at least at the time of recording this video. There are, you can get additional things and customize it as you want. So each one of those customizations will add a little to the price. You can get uh, engravings, different nib types, custom grinds, the tools to take it apart. Uh, all of these things are add-ons which will adjust the price. At the time of recording this, the, the exchange rate between the euro and the dollar makes that come out to about 430 US dollars. Now, that puts this pen in the high end or luxury pen range, clearly. Um, but it is so well made, so brilliantly engineered, and so nicely manufactured that I consider that a, 
actually a very, very good price. If you were to try to get a, you know, Pelican M800 in a demonstrator, you're going to pay at least as much, if not a lot more money, chances are. Um, and so I consider this to be a really, really nice alternative to something like a Pelican demonstrator. Uh, like I said, this massive ink capacity, the filling system makes this pen easy to clean, but it also makes it a pen that you can fill once and use for a month, uh, which is great if you're doing a lot of writing or if you just don't, if you don't have easy, you know, availability to ink. If you're going to travel, this is a pen that would probably travel very, very well. Um, I like it a lot. Um, I'm kind of sad I have to send it back, but, but, uh, Philip needs his pen back and, <laughs> and I need to spend a little bit more time on the Conid website, figuring out what it is I want to get. Cause I think this is a really, um, it's attractive in that very clean line, industrial, modern sort of way, but I am just absolutely in love with the way this thing was engineered. So that should do it for my review of the Conid bulk filler. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them here on YouTube or over on penhabit.com. You can see additional photos on the, the written review on penhabit.com, and the link to that is in the description below. And I look forward to seeing you here next time on The Pen Habit. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.